Yo, 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 how's it going guys? Mun right here and Basel World 2018 just happened and let's just dive right into it and give you my thoughts on on the watches that came out already. Right? We gotta start with the almighty Rolex and uh, this watch right here was the talk of the town. The road, new Rolex GMT Master 2 Pepsi bezel with a GM um, with a Jubilee bracelet. It also features a new movement, which I believe the power reserve has gone up. And um, yeah, you know, what, what can I say, right? Of course it's a beautiful watch. Come on, this thing's been tested, it's been proven. Everybody knows it's a great watch. Rolex knows, it's consumers, it's customers knows. You know, it is, it is a legendary watch. Everybody wants a Pepsi bezel. And uh, it is what it is. You know, am I surprised? Uh, yes. I think everyone anticipated a Coke bezel only because they, you know, everybody thought that they reserved the Pepsi bezel for the white gold version. So, so yeah, you know, if, if, you know, if, if I bought, you know, the, the Pepsi bezel white gold GMT Master 2, you know, that's, I don't know when it came out, I think like five years ago. And now I see this, I'd be a little pissed. I don't know, tell me what you think. Uh, maybe one, maybe you own a... I would love to see uh, someone come up with a video and an owner of the, of the White Gold GMT Master 2 and then you know, give us his honest thoughts of, uh, of this new steel version and how he feels about it, right? I mean, it's still a beautiful watch, come on. Right, the, the white gold uh, with the oyster bracelet and the G GMT bezel, it's, it's a classy watch, it's beautiful, but, but I think we were all under the impression that Rolex would reserve the Pepsi bezel only for the, only for the white gold model. Uh, but here, here it is, you know, it, it's, it's in steel with a Jubilee bracelet. Uh, I, can, I assume they're not going to come up with the oyster bracelet uh, steel oyster bracelet GMT Master 2. I I think, I think that will not happen, right? I I, I don't know. I could be wrong, but um, but who knows, right? So great watch, fantastic watch. Uh, what can I say? Um, Rolex uh, did it again with the GMT Master 2, um, but but not really a. I don't know, for me guys, right, it's not really a wow, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm impressed, I'm more, I'm more curious compared to impressed, where right? everybody was really anticipating this GMT Master 2, so it's not like the design is completely different or anything, it's, it's still the same, they came up with the Pepsi bezel with the steel, the steel watch, great, right, fantastic, great, they're going to sell a lot, you are not going to be able to get it at the authorized dealer, you have to put your name down on the waiting list. I don't even know if they're going to be taking waiting lists. You got to play the game if you want to get one of these uh, one of these watches, right? Which is really annoying. Uh, people just want what they cannot have, you know, and that's and that's what uh, justifies. That's what allows Rolex to price these at uh, at an unattainable uh, level. See, 10,600 Canadian. You know, that's actually not bad, right? <laughs> but obviously you cannot get one and, if you, and, and then you got to go to the secondary market when they come out and they're going to go through the roof. Guaranteed, they're going to, I think people are going to be asking for at least, I don't know, if this is 10,600 Canadian MSRP, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes for 12,000 Canadian or even more, who knows, right? Uh, okay, they came up with the root beer, kind of cool, yeah, and uh, rose gold, it's all right, it's okay. Uh, root beer, root beer is kind of nice. Root beer is a good touch. So there we go. Okay, uh, they came up with a new date just. Date just is, you know, date just is the icon of Rolex, right? It's not the Submariner, it's not the GMT, it's not the Daytona, it's the date just and. It's nice to see that they've come back, uh, come back to earth with a 36 millimeter uh, diameter. Although they did kind of thicken the lugs to give it a nice, you know, a good, you know, nice modern styling with traditional sizing. It's just, you know, very elegant, right? 
I would much prefer the. I'm not a two tone guy. Uh, I would much prefer an all steel, blue dial roulette wheel, roulette date wheel. Oh my goodness, that would be just so sexy. And um, yeah, okay. Uh, new Daytona. Well, man, this is Daytona. This is something else. My goodness, this is drug dealer money, yo. It is psychedelic. What can I say? This is like a treasure. This is like a gem, you know. Um, I don't know how... I, I could never pull this off on my wrist, but I would love to hold one and own one and, and admire it. My God, look at that. Sapphires and diamonds. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. But, you know, completely out of my league and oh, not my style as well, but it's, it's an amazing work of art, right? I cannot uh, deny that. New Rolex Deep Sea. So I believe uh, Rolex here, they, they, made the, they made the watch more proportional. They resized the, the bracelet, I believe, and they, I don't know, they just did something to the proportions to make it more presentable. Um, I think it kind of sucks if you bought the first one. And if you are looking for, uh, a, you know, the Rolex Deep Sea James Cameron, I definitely get this one over the, um, the the first generation one, right? Just just because you know they they made some improvements on its shape and um, proportions, which really was my main gripe with this uh, with this watch. Um, that being said, my wrists are pretty skinny. I could never pull this off. If uh, if you're a big guy, a huge hulking guy, and uh, this is your kind of thing, hey, good on you. This is great, right? Okay, let's uh, look at Tudor now. Tudor, I am more excited with Tudor than I am with uh, with Rolex. Believe it or not, maybe it's just me. I, I just feel that, well, look at that, you know, look at the Tudor Black Bay GMT. Beautiful watch. Um, it, is an, it, is, it is a new watch. It's a completely new model. Great styling. Great functionality. Great design, you know. It's, it's what collectors kind of want, right? And I feel that... Um, Tudor is a lot more in tune with watch collectors and you know they, they kind of give us what we want right and, and it's nice even this Black Bay 58 they brought it back down to 39 millimeter which is which is the traditional size for um, for uh, for the submariners where the Tudor submariners were 39 millimeters so were the you know so were the uh, Rolex Submariners, the pre-ceramics, and, and the beautiful. Alright, look at the Black Bay GMT, aluminum bezel, you know, it's, it's, it's great. It, it's an homage watch being, without being an homage, you know. It's, it's, it's great, it's beautiful. I really, really like this watch, you know. If you wanted to buy this new, I'd say go for it because um, for $4,210, it's... It's not bad at all, right? It's probably a third. Uh, oh no, is it a third? Okay. You know the the Rolex GMT is two and a half times more expensive than this one. Um, is it two and a half times the watch of this? Probably not. And if you're not into the Cyclops, hey, there we go. You know this Tudor does not have a Cyclops. It's a nice modern size at 41 millimeter. It's got a really, you know, it's got the aluminum bezel. It's a, it's a sexy watch. Great splash of color. Just refined, you know. I say go for it. You want to buy a new watch? I think this Black Bay GMT. I, I, you know, I foresee it being very collectible in the future simply because it's the first GMT watch that. Uh, that Tudor has released. I mean, they did release some, some funny ones. Was it the the Tudor Iconaut, something like that? But it was just a little bit too, too modern, a little too out there for me. So I, I'd say go for this, man. You're looking for a, you're looking for a dive watch, and you don't want to pay. Oops, and you don't want to pay like uh, Rolex money. 
Man, this this uh, Tudor Black Bay 58, I think this is the way to go. Look at that, 39 millimeter. Uh, you want something more reserved and, and traditional and, and, and not so loud. This Tudor Black Bay 58, wow, this is my choice of the Tudor sub, of the Tudor dive watches. Right, this is true homage to the, I forget which one. Is it a Tudor 7928? No, there's a Tudor 7928, Tudor 7016. One of those had this uh, exact same kind of dial layout, right, with the snowflake hands, but um, this is beautiful, right? I really, really like Tudor and where they are going. They got a new Tudor Black Bay 32. Hmm. Mm. Which is all right. I guess it's for women's. That's cool, man. I really like Tudor. I like where they're going. Oh, they got Zhou Jielun <laughs> as their ambassador. Jay Cho. He's just a he's a Taiwanese um, singer songwriter. Cool. I guess they are trying to. They're trying to reach out to uh, to the Asian clientele, Taiwanese to be more precise. Um, he's their ambassador, which is which is a little random if you ask me. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, this guy Jay Cho, he was really big in the early two thousands and. Uh, People of my generation would idolize, uh, would know who he is. Oh, damn. Maybe that's why I'm, I'm into the freaking Tudor watches. Holy crap with the marketing, right? I am into Tudor watches. I am the kind of, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm of Asian descent, Chinese descent. And I did listen to his music growing up. And I can afford um, watches at this price range that Tudor is offering. <laughs> it's just marketing at its at its best, right? They're marketing watches to to me, right? To me. This is this is something else, J2. I mean, if you're not Chinese, you would not know who this guy is. Even if you were Chinese, if you were not uh, of my age uh, age bracket, right? Let's say if you're in your 40s, right? I'm in my 30s right now. And uh, he is who I would, you know, who, who I listened to when I was uh, a lot younger. Uh, you know, old Chinese men would not be able to relate with Jay Chow. And, and so this is who they are marketing to. They are, Tudor is marketing towards uh, Y Gen Chinese men. Y Gen Chinese men, okay? So that is their target market, and I have to say, uh, it is working. I'm like a fly drawn to, drawn to uh, one of those UV things, those UV light things. Beautiful. I love Tudor. I love what they've come up with. Right. I love this GMT. I love their Black Bay 58. Let's take a look at Omega. Okay. I better not see any more Chinese singers from my generation. What is this? Um, okay, we got the new Speedmaster. They redecorated the 1861 movement, made it semi skeletonized. Kind of cool, kind of funky, but like I said in my previous videos, guys, if you want a Speedmaster, just get the cheapest one. Get a most affordable one. Get a manual wine, affordable one. Stay away from the from the limited edition ones. They're not really worth it. I feel I don't know what the price of this one is, but I'm gonna assume it's about ten grand. I don't know. Does it say? Doesn't really say. I, mean, I don't really want to look. Uh, cool movement. A little a little gimmicky. All right, a little bit a little gimmicky. And um, yeah, not really for me. They brought back the Seamaster. Where is it? Where is that Seamaster? New Seamaster. And um, 
He brought back the wave dial. Again, my generation, right? Uh, when I when I was younger, uh, Pierce Brosnan was my James Bond, and he wore the Omega Seamaster two five three one point eight zero, which is why I have one, the original one with this with the wave dial, helium escape valve, and yeah, it just represents my generation. And am I into it? Uh, yeah, it's okay. Not too not too blown away with uh, Omega. Yeah, not not a fan. Okay, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, until next time, peace out.